Hi, my name is Ali Shesova from Breacher Digital and in this video we're going to talk about how we measure a transformer. In one of our previous videos we came up with a simplified lump parameter model of the transformer and in this video we're going to use this in order to measure the important parameters that we need for our power supplies. So, as I mentioned in one of our previous videos, the lump parameter model of a transformer looks something like this. And we need to work out these values uh, because we need them for, let's say, a snubber design or working out whether the turns ratio is correct or not. In the case of the snubber design, for example, in a, in a flyback, usually the switch sits here and it's the leakages that will ring with the, uh, with the capacitance of the switch. Let's cover this for now and, we'll, and I will talk about how we get to measure the parameters that we need. One of the parameters that we need is the magnetizing inductance. Now, if you imagine the secondary side, if we leave that open circuit, no current will flow through there. And therefore, if we use the Bode 100 and we measure the total impedance from this side, because there is no current going through here, these two will go out of the picture. right? And therefore, the simplified model will look something like like this. That is the primary resistance, that is the primary leakage, and this is LM. Now you will notice that the leakage is absolutely tiny. The resistance of the wire is also tiny, but the impedance of the magnetizing inductance is absolutely huge. So if we use our body 100 and we measure from here to there, soon this will become the most dominant part and therefore what we measure is in fact LM. So in order to measure LM all we have to do is leave the secondary side open circuit. If you want to work out the turns ratio then what you do is you leave this part open circuit and you measure from this side. And we know from circuit theory that L primary over L secondary is equal to N primary is squared over n secondary squared and therefore we can work out the turns ratio. So that is how we work out LM. Now the next bit is to work out the leakage. <coughs> so let me draw the circuit again. I've got some resistance, I've got primary side leakage, I have got LM. Now for simplicity instead of drawing the secondary parasitics this way let us draw them like so. It makes no difference whether it's that way or the other way if I short the secondary. So in order to measure the leakages what I do is I short this bit here. Okay? When I short this bit here I get this circuit. I have got our primary leakage on the primary side LM leakage on the secondary side referred to the primary and we talked about that in one of our previous videos and then resistance of the secondary referred to the primary. Now this time you will notice again the impedance of this branch is very high right? and the impedance of this branch is absolutely tiny. Therefore the majority of the current is going to flow down here instead of down there. Therefore, this goes out of the picture. So the simplified circuit therefore becomes resistance, leakage, another leakage, resistance, and so on. So that is our primary leakage of the primary leakage of the secondary referred to the primary and resistance of the secondary referred to the primary. So when we put the body 100 and we measure it from this side this is exactly what we're going to see. Now we know that we played the mathematical trick to refer these to the primary but actually that is exactly what you need because the switch is sitting here. 
So what the switch sees is from this point is not the leakage of the secondary on the secondary side. It sees the leakage of the secondary referred to the primary as seen on the primary plus the primary leakage. And therefore the measurement that we make is exactly what we need in order to design our snubbing circuit. Uh, if you wanted to uh, do it for a diode, you could either measure it from the other side or you could actually divide it by the square of the turns ratio, which is, which is what we uh, discussed in the previous video. So now that we know what we have to do, uh, we can go to the lab and we can actually make a measurement. I'm going to do an open circuit test on the uh, transformer and that gives me the magnetizing inductance. And then I'm going to do a short circuit test when I short the secondary and that's going to give me the total leakage as seen on the primary. Okay, so um, as I mentioned earlier, we were going to make some measurements here. I've got a body 100, and here I've got a transformer. We have soldered it on a PCB. Uh, we use this in our workshops in order to measure the magnetizing inductance and the leakage inductance, and then we go and design the snubbers for a, um, a flyback converter. So we teach all of this in, in the workshops, uh, but I'm going to just show you how we're going to do it. The, the body 100 is already calibrated, and uh, this is done in such a way that I can open or short the secondary with this jumper. Now, if you remember earlier on, if I leave the secondary open, then the most dominant parameter is the magnetizing inductance, and therefore, with the secondary open, all I will see is the magnetizing inductance. I'm going to put that in here, and I'm going to measure it. Here we go. That's the body 100 measuring it. Let's see if you can optimize. And you can see beautifully starts flat, that is resistive region, and then the magnetizing inductance is most dominant. And you will see this resonant here. Obviously, we have got windings, so there's the interwinding capacitance, so there is a self resonance of the transformer itself, which you can see right here. In my case, if I move the cursor, I see that it is around 6.6 .6 megahertz. Okay. Now, in the old days, when you were uh, switching at 60 uh, kilohertz or 100 kilohertz, that was not really a problem. But these days, the switching frequencies are going higher and higher and higher. Now, 6 megahertz for self-resonant frequency of a transformer. If you're going to be switching at 1 megahertz, it may cause you problems. So one other reason why you want to measure the transformer is to see where the self-resonant is and make sure that your switching frequency is not uncomfortably close to it. Now, at the moment, you see it's also the phase. You can see that at the resonant frequency, see the phase drops, that is exactly what you expect, but what I can do is instead of looking at the phase, I can look at the inductance, let us optimize, and you can see here the inductance stays very flat, right, for most of the region, right, and it's around 13 microhenries. In fact, that fits almost perfectly with the data sheet of this uh, worth transformer that, that we are using, uh, and we use these in our workshops. And then at resonance, you can see that uh, the, the, uh, the inductance kind of collapses because obviously at this, after this, we go into a capacitive region. So there we go. We have measured the magnetizing inductance of the, uh, of the transformer. Now, if I want to measure the leakage, if you remember, I said we're going to short the secondary. And I can do this very easily with this jumper in the lab, so I just kind of, uh, I'm going to short this. You'll see that as soon as I short this, the uh, inductance falls quite dramatically because by shorting this, if you remember, um, the magnetizing inductance goes out of the picture and I end up looking at the total leakage as seen on the primary. So if I put that in, there you go. You'll see that the inductance just collapsed um, we are going up to 50 megahertz. The self resonant is uh, for, the, for the leakage, uh, the, the total, the resonant for the leakage actually is, is even higher, so we can see it, but it doesn't matter. If I optimize here, you will see that uh, it is very, very low because obviously it's the leakage. Let us change the scale a little bit in order to see it better. There we go. That is our leakage. Now, as you can see, it is quite nonlinear. It's going from 500 nanohenries to 200 nanohenries. Um, when we come to design the um, snubber, you will see that 
the ringing is going to happen at a certain frequency and you ideally want to be measuring somewhere around there. It is an iterative process this, and, and, and you can see that it's relatively flat around here. So I would be inclined to measure it around 10 megahertz or so or I would be inclined to look at the ringing frequency uh, without the snubbing and then try to measure it around there. So let's say that we measure it at around 10 megahertz and at that point it is 200 nanohenries. So now that I know this value, I can go and design my snubber and we'll do that in a different video.